Thanks for joining us on the last day of PAX. I know it can be a little bit tough. How's everybody's energy level doing today? Pretty good? All right. We, we were prepared to make as many gravy jokes as possible to breathe some life into you, so <laughs> thanks for saving us from that. <laughs> uh, my name's Kit Ellis. I'm from Nintendo of America, but we've got three very special guests with us up on stage, so I think we'll just get started with a round of introductions. Hi, everyone. I'm Masashi Takahashi, co-producer of Bravery Second and Layer. Thank you for coming, and thank you for watching, and thank you for inviting us such a wonderful convention and a beautiful city. Uh, I've been looking forward to meeting all of you, and so I hope you enjoy today's um, presentation. Yoroshiku onegaishimasu. <laughs> Um, hello, everyone. Um, my name is John Townsend. I am a senior translator at Square Enix uh, Japan in Tokyo. Um, I was the lead uh, English translator on uh, Bravely Second, and I'm here today to interpret for Mr. Takahashi, and um, maybe later on in the presentation, give everybody a little behind-the-scenes look at um, the process of bringing this wonderful game that uh, Takahashi-san and his team have created um, to you guys, to the international audience. Lastly, I'm Rob. Uh, I'm from uh, Nintendo. I do localization there. I'm kind of just here helping out. Not that special. So. <laughs> <laughs> you won't hear much. <laughs> Go, Bob. <laughs> So before we get into Bravely Second, why don't we go back to Bravely Default, actually, and what can you tell us about the origins of this game? はい、um, so, yeah, with the release of um, Bravely Default, the original game, uh, one of the things that was really uh, a wonderful surprise for us is just the great, the wonderful reception that the game got overseas. And we're like, wow, you know, th there are still people all around the world who are waiting for a really good J Japanese RPG, JRPG, and that was just such a wonderful surprise for us. で、so, yeah, the first game, Brave of Default, it was really something we were making just like the, the ultimate JRPG for the Japanese audience. So um, even when the game was re released, we really at first had no plans ever to really bring it um, overseas to an English language audience. そうですね。なので、あの、ブレイブリーデフォルトっていうのも、あの、ネイティブの方にはちょっと変な名前だなって思われたかもしれないんですけど。So, yeah, so, yeah um, a, a lot of native English speakers might even wonder bravely default. What kind of a, what kind of a name is that? What does that even mean? They <laughs> probably a lot of people wonder that first time. ただ but um, yeah, with the uh, support and uh, the cooperation of our friends at Nintendo, we were able to bring the original Bravely Default, D Bravely Default overseas. And um, yeah, even though um, I didn't have the chance to meet you directly until today, um, we heard all the feedback from overseas and just that everybody was enjoying our game so much, it, it really just made us unbelievably happy. Um, and another really important thing that um, a lesson we learned from the original game is just uh, the, the importance, how important it is to uh, listen to our users and listen to everybody's feedback. あの、日本版でもあの体験版をあのバトル編だとかあのジョブ and so yeah, this started from when we were developing the original Japanese version of uh, the original Bravely Default. We released like six or seven different trial demo versions, each featuring a different part of the uh, game system, like a battle trial, a job and ability trial. And each time we would get um, as much feedback as we could um, from our fans and users um, to incorporate in the game. Um, and yeah, we, we, I'm going to show you a little bit of a video here. 
これはあの体験版あの日本で配信した後にあのに作った比較の映像です。And this is basically, this video is、uh, something that we、uh, released in Japan. It, it's, it's a comparison of、um, the original demo version of the game, the pre release, and then the game that was actually released. And you can see all the little changes we made.、Um, like, for one thing,、um, we had some user feedback that the characters walk too slow, so we、um, bumped up the walking speed by about 20% to make kind of streamline things. The, あの最初の時はあの話しかけるときにだいぶ近寄らないと話しかけられなかったんですけど、あのもうちょっと離れても話せるようにしたりしました。Um, and also at first you had to like really get up in the faces of the NPCs to to talk to them.、Um, we made it so you can actually talk to NPCs from a little further away to make it look more natural. で、あのカメラのズームだったりとか、あの引いたりとかっていうのもあのタイミングを調整しました。And we also kind of changed the timing of the way the map kind of zooms in and out to kind of create that kind of dramatic effect without you losing sight of where you are. でこれもあのユーザーの皆さんから意見もらったものなんですけれども、あの宿屋に泊まった時のフェードアウトが遅いっていうのもすごい言われたので、あのちょっとだけ短くしたりしてます。And, um, even really small minor points like when you sleep at an inn, the user said, oh, the fade out takes too long, we have to wait too long, so we sped that up too, just to make the game more easier and enjoyable to play. <笑>まあ、このようにあのブレイブリーデフォルトの時はあのすごい細かくあの調整をしました。So we... This is just an example of all the really kind of fine tuning and refining that we did、um, with the original game to make it as good as we can. Now, this is probably not the most visually appealing <laughs> slide that we're going to have today, but I, I think it tells an important story of the development of the game. What, what can you tell us about what this is? あのこちらはあのブレイブリーデフォルトを日本で発売した後にあのユーザーの皆さんからいただいた意見ももちろんなんですけれども開発チームからもっとこうすればよかったとかもっとこうしたらよかったんじゃないかっていうのをあの意見をたくさんもらってそれをまとめたものになります。So this is a compilation of all the feedback we got、um, after releasing the original game, both、um, opinions that we got from our users through surveys and also opinions from within our own dev team.、Um, people just like,、um, I couldn't, you know, I really wanted to make that part of the game that much better. So we got all these opinions and we,、uh, this feedback and we put them together. でこれはあの100個あるので100の改善案アンケートと呼びました。And so there's a total of a hundred individual pieces of feedback, so we kind of called this like a hundred proposals for、um, improving the game. でこちらについてあのユーザーさんからあの意見を求めまして、その中で開発チームの中で80個はあのちゃんと修正をして、17個はあのこれは直さない方がいいという意見が多かったので直さない、それでたいあの最終的に直せなかったものっていうのも7個ぐらいしかなかったと記憶しています。So,、um, in the end, we took these,、um, hun these hundred、um, different opinions, we took them back to our dev team and just kind of considered them.、Um, and in the end, we're proud to say that we were able to implement 80 of these improvements in the game. There were another 13 that we kind of decided were maybe best left as is, and another seven that maybe proved a little bit too difficult to implement. But we think that 80 out of 100 improvements,、um, reflecting all this feedback that we got from the fans and from our own team, was,、uh, really helped us refine、um, the gaming experience of the original Bravely Default. So, looking back, how did your experience of making Bravely Default impact your experience on the development of Bravely Second? そうですね、あのブレイブリーデフォルトと、まあ、同じなんですけれどもあのやはりブレイブリーセカンドにおいてもあのプレイ感の快適さっていうのを何よりも大事にしたと思ってます。So,、um, just like in the original game, one of the things we really focused on this time too was just making the game just really easy and intuitive and stress free、uh, to play and fun. まあ、主にバトルの部分なんですけれども、あのーまあ、あのテストプレイというものを結構長い時間取るんですけれどもブレイブリーチームの場合は半年以上かけて何度も何度もバトルをプレイしてもらって磨き上げていきました。So, um, as you probably know with a lot of games,、uh, we do kind of like an internal test play before、uh, releasing it. And for example, with Bravely Second, we spent、uh, half of, a half a year、uh, conducting test plays internally for just the battle system, just refining it and getting the balance of the, ba of the battle system just right. やはりあの開発チームの中だけで議論してしまいますとだんだんあのクロートの考え方になってしまうものなのでやはり初めてプレイした人があのプレイしやすいかそれから操作に迷いがないかっていうところをまあいろんなレベルのプレイヤーの人にプレイしてもらってその度に見直しをしました
But um, yeah, we were also, con one thing that we were um, made sure to take care of um, with the test play process is um, if we just had our team members playing and our, our QA staff, you, get, you only get the opinions of kind of veterans and people who know the game like the back of their hand. So um, we made sure to involve new, entirely new players, people who had never seen the game before um, in the test play process to make sure that the game was really fun for everybody, both veterans and, and newcomers alike. なのであのブレイブリーデフォルトの時点であのそこのところはあのだいぶ快適にしたつもりではあるんですけれどもセカンドでもだいぶ細かいところでいろいろな調整が入っているのでぜひ見つけて楽しんでもらえれば嬉しいなと思ってます。So um, yeah, we think that the original Bravely Default was a, a really、um, smooth and streamlined gaming experience in itself, but we've really、um, fine tuned it and refined it even further this time. So、um, I'm really looking forward to、um, you guys when you play.、Um, just kind of maybe you'll probably be able to find all these little things that we've、uh, tweaked and improved, and、um, we look forward to hearing your thoughts on those. I think for a lot of players, this brave and default battle system that we've been seeing is one of the, you know, may have brought them into the game. What are the origins of that, and how did you expand on it for Bravely Second? そうですね、あのブレイブリーセカンドであの新しく入った要素としてあの、連戦バトルというものがあります。Um, so, one of the new、uh, battle features、um, that we've added in Bravely Second is this ability to kind of chain battles together these, and fight in consecutive battles. これはあの一旦で敵を倒したときに、次にまた連続してバトルをするということを選ぶことができるもので、もし連続でバトルに成功した場合には、経験値だったりとか報酬というのがすごい勢いで上がっていくというものになります。And、um, the way this system works is basically if you're able to defeat a group of foes in one turn,、um, you have the option to immediately take on、um, a new group of enemies. And you can keep that going. As long as you can beat the next group in one turn, you can keep chaining these battles together. And the longer you rack up these victory streaks, you get experience point and job. Point bonuses, and it's a really good a way to、uh, level up your characters and really rack up those experience points quickly. なのでだいぶレベル上げが簡単にできると思いますしあの今回のブレイブリーシリーズってあのジョブのシステムとあのそれからブレイブとデフォルトというオリジナルのシステムがあるので人によっていろいろな戦略が練れるゲームだと思うのでこうやれば一旦で倒せるんじゃないかみたいな感じでいろいろなものを楽して試してもらえるとすごい嬉しいです。So、uh, yeah, we think it's not only a great way to kind of、um, get your power leveling kind of groove on, but also、um, yeah, the way we, we see that、um, with the Bravely series. It's、um, really the two big aspects of the battle system are the job, the job and ability、um, system, and then the brave and default system. And、um, especially with these new consecutive these chain battles, it'll really probably get all of you,、um, get the player thinking about what perfect combination of jobs and abilities will allow me to defeat this group of enemies in one turn. So I think everybody will have their own、uh, strategies, and、um, that's something we're really, really looking forward to. We think you'll really be able to enjoy that part of the game. Looking at the story,、uh, obviously in Bravely Default, that was the first game in the series you had to spend a lot of time establishing the world, establishing these characters. For Bravely Second, where, where do things pick off and who, who are some of the main characters that are involved? そうですね、あのー、ご存知の方もいるかもしれないんですけれども「ブレイブリーセカンド」の冒頭に入っているあのちょっとした紹介ムービーを見ていただこうと思いますでこちら「ブレイブリーデフォルト」のややネタバレになっているので今ちょうど「ブレイブリーデフォルト」プレイしてるよっていう人はちょっとの間耳を塞いでおいていただければなと思います。<笑> Um, so, those of you who have already started playing Bravely Second might already know this, but at the beginning of the game,、um, there is a kind of prologue movie that kind of bridges the gap between the original Bravely Default and the story of Bravely Second.、Um, and we'd like to show that to you right now.、Um, those of you who haven't played the original game or maybe are in the middle of it and haven't quite gotten to the end, there are a few spoils, spoilers here, so you may want to kind of plug your ears and la 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 la. <laughs> <laughs> we, we warned you, here we go. <laughs> so, you've returned. Do you still remember? The desperate cries of a girl pleading for help. It began with the great chasm. The crystals fell into darkness, one by one, heralding the world's end. Then you came, and you met them, four warriors of light. The first was Tiz. He lost everything to the chasm, but the strength he gained from your soul allowed for his miraculous survival. As he stood on the precipice of despair, a girl appeared, offering hope. She was Agnes, 
the last person in the world who could return light to the crystals. Guided by the fairy Airy, the two set forth on their quest. On this journey, they met Ringabel, a man with no memories save one, that he was in search of a special girl. Idia Lee. No sooner had they met than Ringabel pledged his life to her. <laughs> From across lines of war, Idia listened to her heart and joined your cause. It was a journey of countless battles. In the name of anti-crystallism, the Duchy of Eternia pursued the Vestal Agnes. Everywhere you went, the asterisk holders of the Eternian forces stood in your path. But you overcame them all. And in the end achieved your goal. Wind, water, fire, earth. The crystals freed from the shadow shone bright once more. Now light shall return to this world. Or so you believed. Then a great pillar of light rent the sky, ripping through time and space to connect to a parallel world. On and on it hurtled, tearing countless chasms through countless worlds. You thought you had saved the crystals, but it was all an elaborate hoax. I remember everything now. So spake Ringabel upon seeing the face of Altonus dim. For he was Altonus from another world, where he had fallen to a cruel foe. That foe, the true enemy, was Airy all along, your party's guide and ally. She had linked tens of thousands of worlds with her chasms, seeking to revive her dark master. The god of destruction, Ouroboros. The bringer of ruin who consumes entire worlds to claim nigh limitless power. The four were helpless before him. As utter defeat loomed, the pendant that carried the girl's voice to you began to glow. Its light bound together the heroes of countless worlds, giving you the strength to strike down this ruinous god. At long last, peace returned to Luxendark. And when it did, Agnes visited each crystal in turn, restoring them to harmony and order. Upon her return, she was named Pope and leader of the Crystal Orthodoxy. Idia returned home to the Duchy to carry on her father's work. Her eyes open from her experiences. She strives to lead her homeland into a new era. Ringabel went back to the world he hailed from. His reasons were known to himself alone. Perhaps he remembered some long-forgotten duty. And Tis had come to realize that there was another soul residing within him. Yes, your soul. I suppose it's time to return what I borrowed. With those words, he fell into a deep slumber. But that was then. And now, a new tale must be told. So, this is the story of Bravery Default, and the story of Bravery Second. So um, as you can see um, there from that uh, video, now um, the story of Bravely Second, uh, we, pick off, we, we pick up about a couple of years after the events of the first game. 
で前作でも活躍した一人の,あのアニエス・オブリージュというキャラクターが巫女から法王という役職になっていてそ,その時にあのクリスタル正教とエタルニア公国があの歴史的な和平調印式をするというところにあの話が始まります。So、um, the story begins with、um, Agnes Oblige, who is one of our heroines from the first game.、Um, she's been promoted from simply a Vestal to now the,、uh, the, the Pope, the leader of the entire Crystal Orthodoxy, and she's about to preside over a historical peace settlement between the Orthodoxy and the Duchy of Eternia,、um, their longtime、um, enemy. しかしそこに現れたのがこの右側に出ている悪そうなあの皇帝オブリビオンというキャラクターですね。But、um, right on the verge of this historic moment,、um, this mysterious masked figure that you see on the right of your screen,、um, Ke- Kaiser Oblivion,、uh, appears to kind of throw a wrench into the works. And So the Kaiser kidnaps Agnes and、uh, takes her away. And、um, then we see on the left,、um, in the center of the screen, on your, on your left, is our new protagonist, our new hero,、um, Yu Janiolja, who、um, sets forth on a quest to rescue Agnes from the Kaiser's clutches. Now, since you were all good enough to laugh at that terrible gravy joke earlier,、uh, we have some concept art we'd like to show you.、Um, to sort of walk you through the designs of some of the main characters.、Uh, Mr. Takashi, if you could explain、uh, the background of the designs here. わかりました。あのまずはマグノリアというキャラクターです。Um, so we'd like to start with the, char- the character of Magnolia, who is one of our new heroines. であのブレビリーセカンドの中でも一番最初にあのデザインをしてもらった新しいキャラクターです。And、uh, Magnolia was actually the very first、uh, new character for Bravely Second that we designed. The most of the variation of the character was the first time that we designed the character of the first time that we designed the character of the first time that we designed the character of the first time that we designed the character of the first time that we designed the character of the first time that we designed the c h a r a c t e Uh, variations before de- deciding on her final、um, look, her design. So,、um, among all the characters, she's、uh, the oldest, she's kind of an older sister type,、um, and so she kind of has a more mature, kind of sexy adult kind of look. So, she has a more mature, kind of sexy adult kind of look. And、um, next, we have our new protagonist, our hero, Yu. でこちらはあのいいところのお坊ちゃんという形で割と早いタイミングであのデザインが決まったものになります。Um, and he is kind of、um, this prestigious son of a very illustrious family. And、um, with you,、um, we kind of actually pretty,、um, it didn't take us long to kind of settle on his final design. でブレイブリーの世界ではやや頭身が低く表示されるので髪が長いと女の子に見えてしまうかなというところで短髪の元気な感じの右側の,あのデザインに決まりました。At first, we experimented, as you see on the left, giving him kind of longer hair, but with kind of the、uh, super deformed style of the Bravely、um, graphics, it looked a little bit too much like a girl, so we decided to give him this shorter, more kind of boyish cut. でこちらも先ほども人気だったイデアですね。And、uh, now we have Idea, who we can tell has a lot of fans out in the audience there. <laughs> あのこちらはあの前作でも登場した通りでただあの衣装が少し変わっています。And、um, she's pretty much the same character we all know and love from the first game, but her outfit has changed a little bit, as you might notice. In the first game, we played a lot of Ring Abel, the character of the character of the character. And those of you who played the first game might realize from looking at these、um, designs, but her outfit this time is actually kind of resembles、um, the outfit worn by the character Ring Abel,、um, one of the heroes in the original game. でまあ、どのような気持ちでこのような服を着てるかなっていうのをあのデザインであのイメージさせるようなものになってると思います。So yeah, the design is kind of intended to kind of get the player thinking, hmm, what might Idia have been thinking these、uh, past couple of years that kind of inspired her to,、uh, you know, model her outlook after our ring bell. 
でよく見るとあの前作でもあの腰の後ろの部分にあのクマのデザインがあったと思うんですけれども今作ではなんとゾウのキャラクターに可愛いのがついています。And, um, if you look really closely、um, on the back of her armor,、um, in the first game too, she had this kind of little kind of hidden animal design、um, on the back of her armor. In the first game, it was a bear.、Um, in this game, you might see from the picture there a little hidden elephant's face that was kind of worked into the motif of Idia's armor. <laughs> そしてあのこちらはティズオーリアですね。前回と登場した通りです。And, um, this is Tiz Orier, who was also one of our heroes from the original game, who has returned this time. ただあの前作でプレイしていただいた方はだいぶ印象が変わったのに驚かれた方も多いのではないかなと思います。But、um, a lot of you might be a little bit surprised to see how he looks this time. It's quite a bit of a departure from what you saw the last time. でこの間あのティズは生命維持カプセルというものにずっと閉じ込められていた設定なのであの囚人服のようなというかあの病院の中にいる時のような服というところからあのイメージをしたデザインになっています。So, after Tiz kind of fell into, the coma,、uh, fell into a coma at the end of the first game, he's kind of spent the past couple of years in this life preserving pod. And so, his look was kind of,、um, his design was kind of inspired by the outfit that might be worn by a prisoner or a patient at a hospital. And、um, here we have Agnes Oblige, one of our heroes from the first game, who's also back this time. And here we have Agnes Oblige, one of our heroes from the first game, who's also back this time. でこちらもとても素敵なデザインなんですが、実はあの日本でサービスをしているあのブラウザーゲームでのプレイングブレイジュというものがありまして、そちらで鳳凰という設定のキャラクターの衣装があったので、そちらをアニエスらしく着こなしている形になります。Um, and as we mentioned before, Agnes is now the Pope of the Crystal Orthodoxy, and her、um, elegant sort of outfit here is inspired by.、Um, actually, in Japan,、um, we have a browser game that's kind of based on the Bravely Universe called Praying Brage.、Um, it's not out here yet, but in the. In the、um, In, the, uh, yeah, in Playing Brage, there is a,、uh, a Pope character, and、um, the outfit of that Pope character was kind of used to inspire Agnes's look this time. Let's go back to this piece of artwork we saw a little bit earlier. Obviously, you have you in the middle, but the two characters behind him are very important as well. Who are these two? So, this is a very important piece of artwork we saw a little bit earlier. Obviously, you have you in the middle, but the two characters behind him are very important as well. Who are these two? So, yeah, we've already introduced、um, the, the guy in the middle, our new protagonist, Yu Jenny Olja, but、um, together with him here you can see Jan and Nikolai, and together these three are the three cavaliers of the,、uh, crystal, the crystal Guard, the Crystal Orthodoxy's Order of Knights. The Yu の左側にいるあのものがあの剣の達人のジャンですね。そしてワイルドでとっても兄貴肌のあのかっこいいキャラです。So um, on the left, um, we see Jan, and Jan is kind of yeah, he's this kind of wild. He's a real sword, he's expert with the sword. He has this kind of wild look, and he's kind of a older brother sort of mentor figure to the younger you. で、ユウの右側にいるのがあのニコライというキャラクターで、彼はあの回復魔法の使い手で、三人の良きまとめ役というキャラクターになってます。And on the right, you see Nikolai,、um, who's kind of the oldest、uh, member of the Three Cavaliers, kind of the voice of reason. And as you might suspect from his appearance, he's sort of a specialist in the art of healing. この三人であのゲームがスタートする形になります。And so, yeah, the story begins、um, with these three, the Three Cavaliers, setting off on adventure. We are the Three Cavaliers, are we not? Brothers in arms till the end of our days. You lead us, Master Yu. Give the order, and we shall follow. Sir Nikolai, that settles it. Come on, you. Say something leader like. Oh,、uh, right. As captain of the Crystal Guard's three cavaliers, I, Eugeniolja, give my command. We march against the Skyhold. On our name do I swear. We will deliver Her Holiness from the Kaiser's clutches! I! Hear, hear! A long journey awaits us, Master Yu. Pray say your farewells and prepare for the road ahead. Indeed, I'd best go see Alfred. <laughs> Uh, 
Uh, so moving on, uh, Kaiser Oblivion, uh, believe it or not, somebody named Kaiser Oblivion who's sitting in this throne like this looking a little bit crazy. He's a bad guy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's his story? <laughs> わかりました。えっとこちらは敵ですね。今回のあの最初にも登場したあの皇帝オブリビオン、それからアンネという妖精のキャラクターです。So yes, here we have two of our main antagonists,、uh, the Kaiser Oblivion and his fairy sidekick Anna. でオブリビオンも仮面をつけてますし、あの前作やっていただいた方はあの前作にもエアリーという妖精が出てきたのをご存知だと思いますので、今回なぜあの皇帝オブリビオンはアニエスをさらったのかそしてアンネは何者なのかっていうのに注目してもらえればと思います。So I'm just looking at these two, yes,、um, we, you probably have a lot of maybe some ideas about why this Kaiser might be seeking to kidnap アニエス and what he might be seeking to use her powers for. And、um, also those of you who played the first game remember a r i、um, our fairy sidekick from the first game. So What might this fairy be doing, kind of working with the Kaiser? What is she up to? And that's the kind of thing that we think you can look forward to、um, seeing when you play the story of Bravely Second.、Hmm. こちらもあの登場シーンの映像を見ていただこうと思います。And、so, yes, we'd like to show you、um, just a very early scene featuring these two antagonists. We meet at last. Peace, harmony, order. <laughs> I deny your world and everything in it. Stand down, Your Holiness. Unacceptable. <laughs> the Crystal Orthodoxy and the Duchy of Eternia have finally achieved our dream of peace. We will not allow anyone to stand in our way. Are we feisty, Pope Agnes? But you see, we had a dream of our own. To call upon the realm's two greatest powers on this, the day of your greatest triumph, and crush you both in one satisfying swoop. A declaration of war? So be it. The Grand Marshal of Eternia will strike you down where you stand. a l t e r n a t e to my side. How about you? Hmm, do you cut this in there?わかりましたあのジョブをここでいくつか紹介したいと思いますまず一つ目は猫使いというジョブです so, yes, like introduce, um, that,、um, Bravely, <笑>こちらはあの日本でもすごい人気が高いジョブでした is, uh, Japanese, well. <笑> <I wonder why. 笑>こちらはただあの見た目とは裏腹にすごくあの敵の攻撃をラーニングして使えるという結構画期的なジョブです。But, um, as cute as the Catmancer looks, it's also a very potent job, able to use、um, items to basically command cats to use all these very potent attacks and abilities. で猫を使って攻撃するというコミカルさはあるんですけれども、攻撃もできるし、回復や防御もできるし、何でもこなせる万能なジョブです。So,、um, yeah, the way it,、um, the Catmancer fights with cats,、um, they're kind of cute to watch, but yeah, they're also very potent,、um, have abil- having abilities to both attack the enemy and kind of support your own party. So, it's a really、um, powerful job that we think you'll enjoy using. で皆さんあのとても人気が見た目の高いジョブなので最後クリアするまでこのジョブから変えたくないという人も結構いらっしゃいました。Popular, uh, players, answer, really、<笑><笑>ぜひ使ってみてください。So we, we そして次に紹介するのもこれもちょっと変わったジョブでパティシエです。Here, here's Does this make anybody hungry? Tada, I know, Kotira, I know, Tada, Okasho, Scooter, Dakin, Mirka, Mosirena, in this Keredomo. 
Yeah, um, you might just look like, what's this? He's just like making sweets and throwing them at the anime. What's this all about? ただあのすごく敵に弱点をつけたり、あの状態上にできたりと、すごくトリッキーな結構クロート向けに使いやすいジョブだと思います。It's actually a very potent job, especially kind of geared to veteran players with with the ability to kind of inflict status ailments and debuffs on the anime and kind of weaken、um, even powerful foes to kind of give you the upper hand. なのであの強い敵、ボスとかにあったときには、ぜひこのジョブを使って攻略してほしいなと思います。So, um, if you, if you're stuck on a really tough boss, you might actually want to give the Patissier a try. Maybe some of those weaknesses and some of those debuffs that it can put on the enemy might give you the upper hand. そして次がウィザードというジョブです。And next we'd like to introduce the wizard job. こちらはあの魔法が得意なジョブですね。And so, as you might expect,、um, this is a, a job that's very adept with magic. こちら新しい試みで魔法の後に就職区というものをつけることでいろいろと魔法の効果を変えることができるというジョブです。Uh, kind of unique, job, ability, um, kind of spells, kind of でブレイブレイセカンドにもたくさん魔法は出てきますのであのだいぶ終盤までこのジョブっていうのは欠かせないものになるのかなというふうに思っています。So it's a job that you actually get fairly early in the game, but since it has the ability to craft spells with all kinds of different magic usable by other jobs, it's a job that will really kind of serve you well, we think, until the very end of the game. まあ、そうめにジャオツというところで<笑>、他にもたくさん面白いジョブ、それから使いやすいジョブ、でこちらはまだその一部で、もちろん前作でも登場したジョブっていうのもたくさん出てきます。So um, yeah, what we've introduced today is just、um, a few of the many many jobs that we have in this game. You'll see a lot of jobs that are fun to use, that are powerful, that have really kind of cute and cool、um, outfits to choose from. And、um, those of you who played the original game will be happy to know that a lot of the、uh, jobs from the original game also make a return. So you'll be able to kind of mix and match as you please. So, this is the first time I've been able to do this. So,、um, we hope that you'll try them all out, and then in the end, maybe you'll settle on your ideal kind of perfect build for your party that can take you to the end of the game. So let's give Mr. Takahashi a breather here and talk a little bit about、uh, what it means <laughs> bringing these games over to the West,、uh, which means, John, no breather for you, because、okay. this is your job.、Um, <laughs> so, something with these games you always hear about is, oh, these are big games, these are long games. And I think as the player, you know, that, that means you know, oh, it's, oh, it's over 100 hours or whatever that amount of time it takes to get through. For you, what does that mean? Yeah,、um, just to give everybody a kind of sense of the full scope of the game,、um, basically, the The full Japanese script, all the text in the game, comes to 700,000 characters, which is about 350,000、um, English words. And to just give you a frame of reference, that's about the length of roughly five or six full length novels of about 300 pages. <laughs> And you know, I'm sure every project has some of its own challenges associated with, with what you do. What were some of those specific challenges on Bravely Second?、Um, yeah,、um, Bravely Second,、um, it's, it's really a game that's just such a joy to work on as a translator.、Um, it's so much fun. I mean, all the characters, the world, it has, they have so much life, so much charm. It's just this vibrant world that you really get to feel like you know these people as your, your friends throughout the course of the adventure. Um, so, you know, we try to stay true to the spirit of the,、um, the original game, the Japanese script. We preserve this kind of Light-hearted tone and kind of make sure the charm of all the characters comes across. But yeah, a lot of what makes it so fun is also what makes it、um, so challenging because the Japanese script, if you look at it, it's just full of all this wordplay, these puns, all these kind of pop culture references, this humor that you really feel as a translator, it's your job to kind of get that across, you know, <laughs> some one way or another. The puns, give us some, please. Oh, God. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, there's really no end to them. I mean, where do you start? I mean, I, you know, every, first of all, one of the first things you do when you translate the game is we have to name, give all these characters their English names. We have a lot of side characters. Those of you who played the first game probably remember too, but almost every side character's name is a pun. We have、um, one quest, side quest, it's like a parody of a murder mystery, and then one. There's this one character, her name is basically, if you translate the Japanese, it's like, Mrs. I married him for the money. And <laughs> so in, in, in English, she became Madame Goldiga. <laughs> and, you know, and then we have another character who was,、um, he's like a gym teacher, and his Japanese name is maybe something kind of like, you know, wash your gym shorts. <laughs> so in the English version,、um, he became Mr. Sweaty Tracksuit. 
and so, yeah, there, there's, there's all these kind of puns. Um, even the kind of the main characters that we had to think about things like, um, a lot of people ask me, okay, why is you? Why is his name spelled Y-E-W? How did you decide on, on that? And um, we actually, you know, when we first were coming up with the official English spellings for the names, we considered all these different spellings of U's. We considered Y-U, just like the Japanese name. But then we kind of uh, thought about it in the sense of, you know, you um, as a character, he's we have this kind of Japanese kind of side of the Bravely Default world, as you see on the left side, like this town of Yunohana, which is one of the new towns in the game. But um, you, on the other hand, is kind of from this area on the right, which is kind of almost like a European cathedral. Um, it's like a seat of a church. And so the spelling of you, uh, Y-E-W, is actually the tree, the yew tree. Um, and the yew tree was traditionally a tree grown in churchyards. So we thought it was appropriate for this kind of church night. And that's how um, the spelling of you's name came out. And um, yeah, we have um, a lot of, we also have a lot of puns that didn't quite make the cut. Um, you might be interested in knowing that the Catmancer, we actually seriously spent a day just thinking that we're going to call this the Necomancer. We're going to do it. <laughs> uh, we, we, we really wanted to do it. Um, in the end, we kind of uh, went away from it. Just for one thing, we could, you know, not everybody... Um, in the world of the English-speaking world is as Japanese savvy, probably, as those of you are here today. <laughs> and um, also, yeah, too, the, the Catmancer, uh, the character behind that, her name is Minette, you'll see if you play the game. She's also not really from, like, this Japanese-inspired part of the Bravely Default world, so we didn't want to kind of, like, mix that up in terms of the lore and the world-building, but, yeah, she, she almost was a necromancer. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, going back to the scope of the game, something that I think really drives this home for players is how the characters in the game actually have these different dialects. You know, the world is so big, these people speak differently depending on their region. How, how did you approach that? Yeah, um, it's, it's definitely one thing you get when you're playing the Japanese version. Almost every character, they have such unique ways of, of speaking. Um, the Catmancer, um, who we just talked about, um, she basically ends, I mean, those of you who know anything about Japanese, probably, you know, a lot of Japanese sentences might end with ne, but she ends her sentences with nya, because she sounds like a cat. <laughs> But um, it's not so easy um, in English to kind of just change sentence endings and particles. We can't really do that the way we can in Japanese, so we have to figure out other ways of doing it, like making her kind of purr her R's or making um, any kind of word that rhymes with meow. She kind of plays the meow game where any word that rhymes with meow becomes meow or mew. And so that's kind of the way she speaks. And yeah, we have another uh, character who's kind of the lord of the bathhouse, the kind of Japanese hot spring inspired place that you see um, on the left, and um, yeah, he ends all of his sentences with bas. Arigato gozai bas. And bas is Japanese katakana pronunciation for bath. But we can't just end all of his sentences with bath, so instead we just dialed up the uh, bathing and bath puns to 11 with him. Um, <laughs> and he's a very lordly type, but yeah, I mean, every line he says is just a, a silly bathing pun, so maybe you'll enjoy meeting him uh, too. <laughs> And so we actually, one other thing we can mention, we actually have characters whose dialects in the game are based on actual Japanese dialects. And we have a character, Amy, um, who actually speaks in Hiroshima Ben, the Hiroshima uh, Japanese dialect. And um, we were thinking, well, what do we do with her? And we listened to it over and over, and she's kind of got this tough and kind of sassy, you know, it's, it's cute, but it's also kind of tough and sassy. And um, instead of doing like a southern accent, which has been done so many times before, we thought um, we gave her kind of a, a Bronx, Jersey kind of accent. I'm, I'm, I, I might be dating myself, but kind of like Marissa Tomei from My Cousin Vinny or something like that. And uh, yeah, she's kind of fun. You'll meet her. It's just kind of way she kind of taunts and teases the party. She's got some good interactions too. So hopefully you'll yeah, enjoy meeting all these colorful characters in the world of Bravely Second. So as far as everything we've been talking about just now, what, what is this, how does this all apply to the game's uh, VO? There's a lot of voice in the game. What is your approach when you actually get into the studio? Uh, yeah, there, there's a lot of, I mean, there's a lot of text in the game, as we just said. There's also a lot of voice. Dialogue. There's about 14,000 lines of voice dialogue in this game. Almost every line of dialogue, except for like random town NPCs, is fully voiced. So yeah, we have a cast of 50 actors, many of them pulling double and triple duty. It took us three months to record it all in Los Angeles, about 10 hours a day in the studio recording 50 lines an hour for three months. Um, and yeah, that's yeah, what it took to kind of bring all these characters to life. But yeah, I mean, all the actors, they really got into it. They all love the game. They all just want to bring 
what, you know, everything that they can bring more character and charm and joy to the characters. Um, yeah, we had a lot of fun times in the studio. Um, Idia's voice actor does this amazing snoring sound. She sounds like, <laughs> she's this cute, I mean, she's this cute little girl who looks like she could play Idia in a live action version of Bravely Second. <laughs> but when she snores, she sounds like she's like a 300 pound old man. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, I, we all, I think, at some point used her um, snoring sound as our alarm kind of tone. Um, gets me, got me up on time into the studio on many a, a day after pulling late nights. So we are almost done with our presentation here. Uh, John, Mr. Takahashi, any closing thoughts for everybody? Oh, we have we have a slide showing uh, the comparison. Oh, we did. Acting, actually. we did have that before. <laughs> How dare we? Um, so yeah, this is, uh, we just chose one scene um, that you'll be able to, um, you can actually play the game both in Japanese and English, so you can enjoy both vocal tracks, and we just have this scene um, will allow you to just kind of get an idea of how you can compare and listen to the same scene with two voice tracks. This is a scene featuring um, Bella and Donna. Bella, the uh, asterisk holder for the wizard um, job, and um, two of our, yeah, our returning heroine, Idia, and our new uh, protagonist, Yu. And um, now let's, just for reference, you can take a look at and uh, listen to the same scene in Japanese. Yeah, and, and by you know hearing hearing the same scene in different languages, you can kind of see. I mean, a lot of the voices we kind of took our cues from the Japanese version and kind of did the same kind of thing in an English sense. But um, other we made a few little slight changes. Like you might hear Bella, um, the wizard. She has kind of a more kind of really kind of whispery, almost kind of like goth kind of sound in the English version because we thought it matched the way she looked. It kind of cre creates a nice little contrast with her and this really kind of <laughs> evil like cackling doll. Gets even more. It gave me nightmares. Like after each day at the studio <laughs> recording those two. Uh, so for real now, uh, the closing <laughs> thoughts. <laughs> I guess I'm going first. <laughs> so I just wanted to say, yeah, thank you all for coming today. Um, it's been so really um, overwhelming in such a good way and humbling um, to meet, um, you know, so many people who really just kind of love the Bravely series and love the Bravely games. You know, when you're working in an office in Tokyo pulling these late nights, it's easy to kind of lose perspective. You know, what, what are you doing all this for? And, um, I, you know, coming here, it really brings everything into perspective. I mean, why we're making these games, why we're doing the things we do. And, yeah, I, I just... You know, I hope that um, this hour, this presentation today, I mean, that you got a sense for kind of everything that goes into the game. And yeah, hopefully you'll enjoy the game that much more for kind of knowing um, everything that kind of goes into it. Sorry, I I'm really bad at speaking in public. <laughs> uh, first, yeah, first of all, just thank you so, so much uh, for coming today. 
あのインターネット上ではあの皆さんあのブレイブリーシリーズを好きでいてくれてる方っているんだなっていうのはなんとなく分かってはいたんですけどあの直接皆さんに会うことができる機会っていうのをもらえて本当にあのとても良い体験になりました。あのずっとジョンとも今日はあの人が本当に来るのかなみたいな感じで心配してたんですけれども全然心配いりませんでした。なのであの皆さんの,あの期待に応えられるゲームというものをこれからもあの頑張って作っていきたいと思いますのであの僕たちのことをあのずっと注目していってもらえれば嬉しいなと思いますそれからあの本当に本当にあのブリブリシリーズを愛していただいて本当にありがとうございます。そしていつの日かまたパックスイストに来たいなと思います。そうですね。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございこちらあの壁紙という形にして皆さんに使っていただけるように加工したものをあの任天堂の公式サイトにアップしてますのでぜひダウンロードしていただければなと思います。もうできるというふうに聞いてます。So, to kind of commemorate the occasion, we've taken all of these,、um, these illustrations and kind of turned them into wallpapers that you'll be able to use、um, to decorate your, your PCs or your, your phones if you'd like to. And they'll be available on the、um, Nintendo official、uh, Bravely Second、uh, homepage. I think they're probably up there already at the time that we're saying this. So,、um, yeah, definitely check them out and、uh, yeah, decorate, decorate your computers with them as you will.